It's Monday, April 6. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. Breaking news today out of New York. Are we beginning to see a flattening of the curve? The stock market sure likes it. It's up over 5% today so far. This is number four in an ongoing series of videos where we're means testing the IHME data on the coronavirus because this is important data that the government is using to plan their response to this epidemic. These projections are based on the best that scientists have of information on this virus. We need to means test it because by only through empirically deriving this data, that is getting this data from actual numbers on the streets, will we begin to understand how this virus works. Since we have no vaccine, and this is the first time we've seen this virus in the human population, we still need to determine important factors such as are not the rate of spread, the denominator of the death rate equation, the number of cases, confirmed cases, the number of actual cases out there, the number of asymptomatic cases. We simply don't know that stuff until we collect the data from this epidemic. So that's why we're going through these charts. And each day as we go along, we can take screenshots of these charts and see how the numbers change and see how close they were to their initial estimates. In today's briefing, Governor Cuomo out of New York City, by the way, New York City, of course, is the, about the epicenter of this epidemic here in the United States for a number of reasons. Governor Cuomo announced 4,758 deaths total in New York. Yesterday was 4,159, and the day before that was in the high 3,000s. So what they're beginning to see is a decrease in the rate of deaths, a decrease in the number of deaths that are happening per day. It's beginning to flatten the curve. And this flattening of the curve is all because of the extreme economic measures we're taking by shutting down the economy, social distancing. Governor Cuomo is also seeing a little bit of relief on the total number of patients in the hospitals, relieving some of the misery there in New York City. He's also noted a sharp decrease in the number of non-COVID-19 patients in the hospitals. One of the side effects of shutting down the economy is you have less people getting hurt and needing hospitalization. Regarding our IHME data, they are revising their total number of deaths by 4 August down to 81,766 as of today. This is more in line with the numbers we saw back on 31 March where they were predicting 83,976. The data in between those two dates had the number of deaths significantly higher. So these numbers are going to change as the actual data comes in. That's why they're called projections. In airline news, an interesting article came out in Forbes magazine where a statistician of airline data in Florida figured that between the big four airlines in the United States, Delta, United, American, and Southwest, it takes before this epidemic hit, it took a, an average load factor of about 75% in order to break even on an airline flight. On average, he found that the average airliner, if that was completely full of passengers, paying passengers, the average airline flight, individual flight, profited about $10,000 profit. At 75% load, it just simply broke even. At 25% load, it was losing money on the order on the average of about $20,000 per flight. So as you can see, the risk to the downside in the airline industry is huge. This is why the airlines are hit so hard during this epidemic. And this is why I personally do not invest in airline stocks. Well, I did, but I've always lost. <laughs> Over at American Airlines, they're still working out the number of leaves of absences. Remember where they had 620 pilots take a permanent leave of absence or an early retirement. For the month of this month, April, they were going to offer leaves of absences to thousands of pilots, but only 1,200 leaves of absences were awarded. Now they're going to run it again for the month of May, and they're going to offer another 3,000 leaves of absences varying in length from one to three to six months for the pilots at American Airlines. So that potentially will put about 4,000 pilots out on a leave of absence plus the 620 pilots that retired early. 
In local weather, we had a great storm this weekend that dropped over three and a half inches of rain in the Blanco Lirio rain gauge and then turned to snow yesterday, dumping about four inches of heavy wet snow. This is at the 3200 foot level here locally. Up in the high Sierra, they probably got anywhere from four to six feet of fresh snow. So for the month of April, this one storm put us way ahead for the month of April precipitation here in California and is again Northern California and is again helping to offset the real dry weather we had back in February. So let's go inside and take a look at the data, see where we stand today. Remember the data at the IHME website is lagging data. It's always lagging data. It's always lagging by about two days or so, but we can still see the trends and we can still keep track of this and see just how accurate this is going to turn out to be by doing these videos every couple of days. Let's start here with the Johns Hopkins University page updated today at 11.45 a.m. 1.3 million worldwide, 73,703 total deaths worldwide, 275,000 recovered. Looking at this rough data down here on the lower right hand corner, which ends uh, two days ago on the 4th of April, we can begin to see this curve possibly reaching an apex here on 4 April on the log scale 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 up to a million cases maybe a apex right here at the end of the data daily increases in cases a pretty good decrease on the 4th of April well, it's, we got to see if this trend continues here on the IHME data, healthdata.org, the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation projections for the United States, last updated yesterday, April 5th. Still nine days away from the peak resource use, still estimating around 15 April. Look at the difference now in the high and low projections are getting a, a quite a bit different shape to them. They're still looking at a shortage, a bed shortage of 36,654 across the whole United States and an ICU bed shortage of 16,323, 24,828 ventilators needed. Here's what that bed data looked like back on 31 March. Deaths per day, the solid red line being the actual data as of April 4th here in the U.S., 1,755 deaths per day or on the day of April 4th. The day before that, April 3, 1,157, and April 2nd, 1,149. Again, look at the jagged nature of the possible highs and lows on this. They're looking at it peaking out somewhere around 3,000 deaths per day in about 10 days across the entire United States. Total deaths as of April 4, U.S., 8,826. And this is the number that we're watching. What's the prediction on the total deaths as of August 4th? This number is down considerably, 81,766 with a low range of around 50,000 and a high range of around 135,000. Looking at a screenshot from the previous videos, we could see just two days ago, this total death count for the U.S. was 93,531, considerably higher. And four days ago, the count was 83,967. So today's count a bit lower than previous estimates. 
So if we take the numbers from the governor from today's briefing on the number of deaths, we're showing 556 additional deaths on 5 April, actual, compared to a projected of 713, and 599 death, deaths today, 6 April, compared to a projected 784. So a bit less than projected, considerably less than projected. And total deaths today, 4758, 1, 2, there's 7 April, 4,758 compared to a projected 5,906. So these numbers are coming down. Now let's go from New York where demand outstrips resources over to California where it's just the opposite story. California started its stay-at-home orders earlier than New York, March 19th. Everything closed down, flattening the curve substantially. But flattening the curve also means delaying the peak. We're still 11 days out here in California. As of April 4th, 46 deaths per day. Again, look at that discrepancy in the highs and lows, especially the highs. And as of April 4th, a total of 311 deaths, a little bit of a discrepancy from what the California Health Department is saying, 319 fatalities as of 4 April. And look at this, uh, the gender or the age breakdown here in California of the confirmed positive cases, age 0 to 17, 160 cases, age 18 to 49, 6,610 cases age 50 to 64, 3,653 cases, and age 65 and older, 2,966. So for California, as of 4 April, they're projecting 1,783 fatalities by the 4th of August. Again, these numbers will probably be coming down. Back over to the logarithmic charts on the New York Times page updated April 6, but I'm not sure what date these last data points actually are. Here in the US, which was on a steep curve of doubling every two days, we're now beginning to bend the rate of deaths down to a doubling of every four days. So we should soon be on track with Spain doubling every eight days and Italy doubling every 13 days as we reach the top of the apex of the curve. Looking at the states, New York doubling every three days, California doubling every five days, Washington State long flattened the curve, doubling every nine days. So hopefully we're bending the curve in the correct direction as we get to the apex of this. We'll keep posting new information as we get it every couple days. We'll keep updating this data and validate it. Say goodbye, kids. Bye. See you here.